My name is Paula Swain, and I'm here at the Mansion House in Independence, Missouri, historical Independence, Missouri, by the way, where the trails all started. And uh, we live in a house that was built around 1827 as a historical landmark. Well, actually, um, coming here to the Midwest, just seeing some of the people who were already going that direction spoke to my heart as I researched the scriptures, the scriptures were very clear on how um, God viewed his daughters and how he wanted them to be and, and what he thought was beautiful. And um, when I saw the, the dress, um, it just spoke to me. It's, it's something that I looked fondly at before, but I didn't have the courage to do. And I was just at a place in my life where I was ready to make that change. And um, so at first it was the scriptures that I did it by faith. It was difficult because uh, the people that are, are around me don't cover their heads for the most part. And so it was, it was really hard uh, to make that decision and to walk that walk right at first until they got used to me. And um, so I just continued that walk and then uh, the Lord started uh, giving me witnesses that this is what he particularly wanted me to do. And so when I realized this was his idea and not mine, it cemented the whole thing. Well, I think the scriptures are very clear um, how the Lord feels about it. There is some discrepancy because the scriptures say um, a woman's hair is her covering, but the woman's hair is also her glory. And I think I said this before, but um, if you're going to go into prayer directly to the Father, you come out from under the covering of your husband, your, um, your hair should be covered, your glory should be covered because you're speaking directly to the Father. If we're to be in prayer continually, our hair should be covered continually. It is inconvenient to put a prayer shawl on, which is where I began with a prayer shawl, uh, every time I want to pray, and especially if my hands are in, um, cleaning solutions or my hands are making food, I would make the head covering all messy, <laughs> the prayer shawl all messy. So it makes more sense to wear the head covering all the time because we're to be in prayer all the time. The Lord wants us constantly in touch with him. So it's, it's a convenience, if nothing else. And it's a protection um, that the Lord inspired me to understand just recently that that um, the head covering I wear is for my protection, my spiritual protection, as well as my physical protection. People look at me different, they treat me different when I'm wearing the head covering, and I don't wear the head covering to be treated differently, but I've noticed that there comes some respect with that as well. Yes, um, we look at beauty through the eyes of the world whether it is our hair or makeup. Uh, the world tells us what is beautiful and what we should do to make ourselves that way. It is very tempting to style your hair, especially when you're going out and doing something special. You want it to be pretty. Um, but there's something very simple and elegant about the head covering as well. Well, makeup, um, makeup, I hate to put it this way because it sounds very harsh, but it's a lie. Um, God made us a certain way, and when we put makeup on our face, not only does it uh, clog up the pores and it's very unhealthy, uh, everything that you put on your skin goes into the organs of the body. Most of the makeup we use has petroleum products in it and other products that are carcinogens are, are suspect of being carcinogenic, and so we're poisoning the inside of our body, clogging up our pores, and causing problems on the outside of our body. And on top of that, we're making ourselves look a certain way that might be appealing to people. And so my question is, who are you trying to please? Um, God made us beautiful. When we wear makeup, we're telling God that he doesn't know what he's doing. 
I let the spirit guide me on that because everybody isn't in the same place at the same time. And if we say something too quickly, sometimes they're not receptive. In fact, we can turn them off to the point that they don't want to hear us at all. I try to, I, I seem to do more with a silent witness. I've had women come up to me and what I'm wearing and how I wear my head covering speaks more loudly than words can speak. They'll ask me questions and I use those opportunities to tell them why. Um, I tell them to go to your site and, and watch the interview that you did on me last time. Um, and, I, and I talk to them about the scriptures because the scriptures can be confusing to them and, and they wanna know why and they say, well, that's not how I feel. But it's, it's I think that, that many times we're just unsure of ourselves and because we're unsure of ourselves, we do what the world tells us to do so that we will, so the world will like us better. And, and so sometimes you, it has to be a heart to heart type of thing where it's a sister to sister talking out of love and out of understanding. I've been there before. I was wearing makeup before and I wore it so well that people couldn't tell I was wearing it. And um, so I think that once you're in that situation, you can speak more intelligently to it and with compassion with a woman. She also has to deal with her husband. And my husband had a hard time with this at first. He didn't want me to not wear makeup. He liked me with makeup on and he liked me with my hairstyle. And I had to really watch it at first. I had to do this gradually in some areas because he just didn't like it. So women also have to deal with their husbands at home. Uh, just because women quite often get spiritual understanding about things before their husbands do, doesn't mean that they're just supposed to just dive into it. It could cause a real problem at home. Well, just walk around with me for a while and, and experience the looks that I get and the the way people respond to me. There's something so beautiful about simplicity and modesty. It, in fact, it's more attractive because when you're exposing yourself, there's nothing left to be seen anyway. So not only are you causing attention to those areas that you say you're not, you really are advertising areas that, that you say you're not advertising, um, but there's actually more beauty when you're, when, when you're covering those areas. Um, I'm treated with a lot more respect from men. I have men take double looks at me many, many times. I've had men look at me not with a sexual desire at all. It's almost like um, they're remembering a time that they used to live in that they'd forgotten and it's almost a wistful look. Um, I've had men come up to me and say how beautiful the clothes are that I'm wearing. They're so um, elegant and so feminine. And so I think that we think men are going to think a certain way, but they really aren't. Well, <laughs> I've never been asked this question before. Um, and. I've heard you address it, and you address it in such a straightforward way that I don't know whether I want to address it in that way, but I do understand the implications uh, behind what high heels do to the body and um, not only causing the back to go out, but it causes men to look at, to a certain area. And um, I think, again, it's just advertising things you don't really want advertised. There are women out there who are naive. They don't realize um, that certain things do certain things to men. You know, the way we dress, the way we are. I, I know for a long time I didn't, it was naivety. I didn't realize. Um, God had to really speak to me about that. And so um, I just pray for those women I pray for those women because they don't know. They're, they're looking at it as a fashion thing. Some women know exactly what they're doing and, and they want attention and they want specific attention. 
and you can tell they want specific attention. It's, 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 they have wanton looks and you know, they're just trying to get that attention. And my goodness, I, it's sad. It's really sad because the attention they're getting in the end is not really what they want. Well, as far as the modesty issue, if you're covering yourself, it's not going to be seen anyway. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to wear sleeveless blouses and sleeveless dresses and, you know, bathing suits and different things like that, uh, you're going to be exposing that area. So from that standpoint, um, if you don't want it to be seen, just be modest. I think that especially Christian women or women who are of faith, if they want the world to look at them differently as far as um, what they say, how they should live, and how the world should be, um, we're not supposed to look like the world. If we want the world to look at us differently, we can't look like the world and expect them to do what we say to do what the scriptures say. If we're going to be like the world and we're going to act, if we're going to act like the world, then don't expect the world to pay any attention um, to what you say the scriptures say, what the Lord wants you to do. They're not going to because your witness isn't there. I have found that the, the silent witness is the most powerful witness at all, of all. You do not have to um, say anything. You just have to be. We are all living in a fishbowl. Whatever we do out there, whatever we say out there, whether, whether we realize we're been, being watched or not, we're being watched and we're being observed. And um, that, that seems to um, speak much more loudly than words will ever speak. Um, again, I mentioned this last time, but I think women should learn to sew. Read Proverbs 13. And um, the other, you know, you asked me another scripture last time, and I'm going to tell you one that speaks most powerfully of all, and it's why I teach the raw food classes, it's why I sew and I make things the way I do. It motivates me. It's why I'm outspoken many times, and some people say I'm very outspoken. I don't mean to be. But James 4.17 says, to know to do good and to do it not, to you it is a sin. And so that should be our, all of our motivation on every aspect of our life. If we know to do good and we do not do it, to us it is a sin. If we should be a modest woman, if we should um, be a godly woman, then we need to act that way. And we need... it we should act in such a way that whether we know someone's watching or not or someone's listening or not they're going to hear godly things and they're going to observe godly actions that would be my ending statement they can um they can uh email me at stepping stones to shalem at gmail.com and that's uh, stepping stones to and that's shalem is spelled s-h-e-l-e-m at gmail.com shalem is hebrew for wholeness so stepping stones to wholeness or stepping stones to shalem excuse me dot com and um, they can uh, ask me there and um, i will get back with you if you want me to call you just give me your phone number and i'll call you from there do you have a website or a blog or are you on facebook uh, I am on Facebook, <laughs> but I don't get on Facebook very often. I'm pretty busy. I have a, a, a greenhouse I deal with, and I have all kinds of issues I deal with here. So I don't get on there very often. So if you try to get me on Facebook, um, it's going to be a slower way to get a hold of me even than the, the email. Um, if I feel comfortable, I will give you my phone number, and I, texting is even faster for me. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us on the show. You're welcome. 
Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh.